Wow. Wow, that's that. I mean, we, we could be here for days, but so I'll try to try to do the Cliff Notes version. So um, I uh, I grew up mainly in a little town, Findlay, Ohio, and my father was the advertising manager of Cooper Tire and Rubber Company. And then he started his own agency. So I always thought of him as the Don Draper of Findlay, Ohio. So I grew up around uh, the cufflinks, the martini, the cigarette, all that, and the, the tie and nice suits and things. Um, so I grew up around uh, the business of advertising and creativity. And I just, you know, always really enjoyed having my father tell me about a problem that he had and how he solved it. And, uh, and I love the way that I saw that he used his mind, not just uh, the client's checkbook, uh, that he would try to, if you will, outflank or outsmart the competition or the situation. So I just really, I really liked that. And so, uh, uh, so I went to, uh, 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 I was in college and, uh, and uh, I think I was uh, after my sophomore year, my father said, hey, why don't you come work for the agency for the summer? And he had, you know, like a five per small five person agency. And I went and went to work for him and I loved it so much. I never went back to college. It just was I was learning so much. And it was a small enough agency where I had to be the account person, the creative director, the copywriter, uh, uh, you know, the media buyer I had to do everything, which is great because I had to learn all of that. And after about uh, I also discovered there that I really preferred business to business. We had business to business and business to consumer clients and business to consumer many times really just got down to how much money do you have for your media budget? Okay, where business to business. You didn't ha you could use your brain, you know, and you you didn't have to just ha having dollars is nice, but you didn't have to have do big dollars. You, the solution wasn't dependent upon. So I love I love getting really to the heart of the matter. Usually a client will call would call and still to this day calls and says, hey, Mark, you know, we need a new website. Hey, Mark, we need a this. Right. And I'm I'm like, OK, let's back up. What, what's the situation? What are you trying to do? What's the problem and so forth? We can always do a website or brochure or whatever, but but maybe there's a smarter way to solve this. And so I I found that I just love that. And sometimes, you know, I would uh, so I went from my father to uh, I went to an agency in Toledo, Ohio, called Wiedersheim Strandberg, which uh, had about 40 people and just did building materials. And uh, uh, so many building material companies from around the Midwest, um, Elger Plumbing, uh, um, Wausau, Windows, uh, uh, we did work for Formica, Don Products, a lot of different companies, but the biggest client was Owens Corning. And that was great for my learning because they did commercial, residential, new construction and remodel repair, uh, roofing, insulation, uh, furnace filters, pipe insulation, all different kinds of products. So it was really uh, a great way for me to take my interest in B2B and learn building materials. It was also great because at that point, Owens Corning was really uh, believed in marketing and they really invested heavily in marketing. And uh, so whether it was like the Pink Panther or they were on television when other building material companies weren't, uh, everything they did, they were looking for, you know, excellence in, in, uh, in sales and marketing. So it was a great company to work, have as a client and learn a lot from. Uh, from there, I then left and started my own agency with three other guys with about as much sense as that old TV show, The Little Rascals, you know, where it's like, let's have a play today. The four of us said, let's start an ad agency. We had no idea what that meant. You know, we, we had this skill set, but we didn't know like cash flow. We didn't understand how to estimate things, how to get paid. We didn't, you know, somehow, I don't know how, but somehow we survived and, and, and made it. Probably because we found a really good accountant who, who sat us down and, and wise this up about money. Um, and uh, so over time, my three partners uh, went off to other ventures and it was just me. And then uh, I grew that business with a focus on building materials and called ourselves an advertising agency, but 
did very little advertising because I thought if advertising solution, you haven't thought hard enough, uh, there's a better way to do it. And uh, then in uh, 2011, I sold uh, that agency, Interrupt Marketing, to uh, an ex-client and a great guy, Bill Rossiter. And uh, he, he bought it. And then I um, decided I wanted to become a consultant. And, it, and of course, everybody says I'm be a consultant, I, but none of us know what the heck that means or how to be a consultant. And I, <laughs> I had to learn, took a little while to learn that lesson. But two things that I, the number one, the one reason that I did it was I was finding that half the time a new client would come and they would have, they wanted to spend money on marketing. And before we get started, I would go out and do my research and ride with salespeople, interview customers and so forth. And I would discover marketing's not your problem. You got another issue here. <laughs> sure, better marketing can help, but it's kind of like we've got your uh, hand tied behind your back if you don't fix this issue. And it could be about customer service. It could be about warranty claims. It could be about shipping, it, many things. And I thought, I really want to help the company grow. I don't want to be tied to just like it has to be a new website <laughs> or something. And uh, and also, I wanted the freedom to be able to speak bluntly and speak my mind and not hold back because I don't want to upset the client because they might leave me. So I like the idea of being a consultant where there's an end to this. Like, I'm going to come in and do this and then I'm going to go away. <laughs> um, so I uh, and then that led me to two other real quick things. One person uh, advised me, Mark, you need to start a blog and you need to write 30 blog posts in the next 30 days. And I I said, did you ever talk to my, you met my high school English teacher? Because I don't know that's going to happen. But somehow I did it. You know, he convinced me, Mark, do you, wonder, if I said, ask you, how do I sell a home builder? Could you tell me? He goes, oh, of course I can. Well, write that. <laughs> and so I, uh, and then another advisor said, Mark, write a book. I go, oh no, that's never going to happen, right? And so, but after six months of writing a blog, I realized I had half a book written. And I thought, what are the missing chapters? And I just took the next six months and those blog posts became the chapters in the book. And then, so I ended up uh, right, come, you know, publishing uh, the book, Building Material Channel Marketing, which has been quite successful, mainly because there's no competition. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, it's been, it's, it's done very well. And I'm in the process of doing the next version of it because so much has changed in the last 10 years. So I now live in uh, Boulder, Colorado. I moved here from Ohio because of the sun and it's uh, just a bright sunny place. And uh, there are, uh, this is, uh, there's so many smart people here. I just love running into people that are smarter than I am that I can learn from. And that's uh, Boulder is fu full of that. And so right now I'm consulting with companies. I, I speak at events. I do uh, twice a year, I do a workshop. And I love also just to share information with like my newsletter and blog posts and podcasts and other, any way I can help people to do a better job. Now that's me. Well, the wizard um, came from, uh, I just have a, my mind, uh, well, one, I, I think I think I'm ADHD, and so I've constantly like there's a hundred channels going on. There's just constant all this information coming in my mind all the time, and and I have an ability to uh, connect dots. I just I see connections that other people don't see, and you know, like I could be walking through an airport and notice something and say, "Wow." you know, that is going to have an effect on this building material company. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and so, or, or read something in the New York times or wall street journal or something. And so, and, and I'm an avid learner. I'm constantly, you know, reading and learning things or, you know, going to conferences or any way I can soak up information. I am. So people give me a problem or they describe something and, and I am very, usually very fast, I see, I see very quickly the issue and the solution and, and what the problem is. And so people from early in my career, you know, would say, gee, Mark, you're like a wizard, like how fast you can, you see what the issue is. 
and um you know and it's it wasn't like you know you know i see this uh this beautiful poster with this headline and this photo of a beach or it's, it was more like okay the issue is your salespeople are calling on the wrong people okay or the issue is they're they're walking in with the wrong message okay they've managed to create the wrong image in the customer's mind about who you are that's our problem that's what we got to fix okay and they'd be like whoa you know uh <laughs> so that's where the wizard came from. And then when I went to start wizard strategy, uh, I someone had already grabbed all the wizards and uh, URLs. And the only one I, if I stuck an H in there, then, then it worked. I thought, okay, that's close enough. So <laughs> that's the wizard. Well, they've historically been extremely slow to change, you know, and, and one of the biggest reasons is their customers are very slow to change. You know, if you've ever gone and talked to, you know, a carpenter, a builder, a contractor in New England, you know, they're going to talk to you about how their grandfather built things this way. They work fine. Their father did. They did. There's no reason to change, you know. And so you, you, you have, so the, the building material company's customers are, uh, very have traditionally been very set in their ways and 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 very slow to accept new products and uh, in some cases you you can see like wow um you know they've been fooled before so we take a product like a shingle roof you know well there's probably you know if you screw that up there's going to be a big cost um you know, if you sell somebody some new windows and they're a little leaky, it's not the end of the world. It's not a nice thing, but it's not the end of the world, you know, but or, you know, uh, you try a new kind of drywall, new kind of paint. It doesn't work, you know, uh, either it doesn't install right or it doesn't stand up. Um, and no matter how well something's tested until it's been out in the real world, the the people like contractors are not going to believe it. Um, and so, so that's historically been. Then we have companies, unfortunately, because of that, we have companies who, um, they have a factory that makes a product. And so they look at capacity utilization. The worst thing I would want to do is in any way, uh, hurt the capacity utilization of this plant. So I don't want, so if I make vinyl siding, I don't want another kind of siding, right? Uh, there, there's, because if I, if I look at fiber cement or I look at, a, at another kind of compressed wood or something like that, well, that could, that could hurt my vinyl business. And that would make my plant not produce, uh, run seven days a week, three shifts a day. And, uh, and so they're, they're stuck in that mindset and they're kind of allowed to, I guess, you know, you look at, uh, you look at so many other industries, you know, you, we, we, we look at like high tech, you know, like, okay, you know, if you aren't, you know, you can be to have the world's greatest cell phone, but if you aren't, you don't have the next greatest cell phone that's going to come out in 12 months, you're going to be gone. Okay. They, they, uh, other companies have left them. They don't care about the factory. They don't care about the utilization of the factory. I'll get it made somewhere um, where, we're still tied to we have a factory this asset that can make things so we so we have to use it where other companies go i'm a brand i've got i'm innovative i don't have to make anything i mean does apple make anything you know <laughs> you know uh, so and so i think we're we're starting to see some we're seeing one we're seeing a, a, a we're seeing new products being accepted faster like I can remember when DuPont first introduced um, uh, Tyvek and builders looked and went, what, you know, are you kidding me? Why am I going to wrap a house in paper? What? Okay. But they stuck with it and, and they convinced builders, they changed building codes, they educated people about uh, what they were trying to do, what the product would do. And, and it probably took them 20 years, but they stuck with it, right? And it wasn't just advertising. It was like they, they were they covered all the bases, you know, um, and then along comes a company from Australia called James Hardy. They got this crazy product called fiber cement siding. Are you kidding me? Who would put fiber cement siding on a cider house? It's heavy. You can't leave it out in the rain. And, you know, if you cut it, it's got this silica dust. It's such a oh, it's a horrible product. Right. You know, the vinyl siding industry just laughed at it. Well, 
I'm going to say, you know, I don't know the exact thing, but, you know, it, it took them, you know, I'm going to say seven years or something to, to, to gain widespread acceptance where they like, you know, they, they have a huge chunk of the market and they're still going, right? Um, then along comes uh, Huber with uh, Zip. And, you know, I, I drive her, as we all do, I think I, I'm always looking at, when I'm traveling, I'm always looking at construction sites or are there houses being built here? Are there buildings being built, you know, and used to seeing, you know, Owens Corning pink or Dow blue foam or yellow dense glass, you know, those colors. And all of a sudden, overnight, I just saw green. I, don't, I just saw green, at least residentially, you know, to start with. I was like, how, and I mean, I, I just, would that take? Maybe two years, you know? And so, so if you have a product that offers a true benefit and you can clearly communicate it, I think that the customers are, are changing or they're, they're much more rapidly accepting change. The other big reason that's driving it is because of offsite construction panelized or modular that it was just accepted that buildings cost 30 percent more than they have to or take 30 percent longer to build than they need to and that's being proven wrong so now the money people are saying wait a minute okay you want to build this new hotel i'll lend you the money but how are you going to build it oh you're going to build it the old-fashioned way on the job site okay you know, gee, here's this other guy who wants to build a one. He's going to build it modularly, and he's going to have his hotel done a year ahead of time before you. And he's going to be making money. He's going to stop paying low interest on his uh, construction loan sooner, and he's going to have money coming in. And so that's that is that's going to be driving change where even the resistant uh, people that have traditionally been resistant, like contractors, are going to have no choice. <laughs> It's just going to be. This is how we're building this building. Would you like to? Would you like to be the labor? Um, so I think you know it's speeding up, and and a lot of our industry is not prepared for this pace of change. But um, uh, you know, a lot of senior management has been around a long time and is not used to this pace of change that we're seeing. Well, what I find is uh, that I, uh, I'm not wedded to a, uh, a solution. And, and the other is that um, it's so, so many consultants are, they're very good at a specialty. And so, and so it could be sales development, it could be digital marketing or something like that. Well, that then presupposes that that is the solution. Uh, so the, the client has made the choice about the solution uh, and based on their own, just their own, you know, biases, history, what they believe, and they, and they, and they might be right. But many times I find that they're, it's, it's not that improving anything isn't good. It's that are you improving the, the thing that you know, that with the least effort will get you the most return, you know, and, uh, and so, and the other thing is that while I'm brought in for a very specific assignment, I can't help myself, but uh, I just see other areas that the, that the, that the company should improve. And I, and I, and I, it's not part of my assignment, but I point them out. And not with a thing about like, well, that'll turn into another project for me. You know, like I, I, like I, I will be many, you know, most of the time it's about, okay, we're, we have this product and this is the people we sell it to and we wanna grow our sales, right? And then I, you know, I'm sitting there looking at, okay, uh, this really isn't gonna have a big effect on, on, on improving your sales, but I wanna, you know, let's look at your social media presence you know not part of my assignment you know whatever but oh my gosh okay so like none of your people are on linkedin uh none of your you know your your vp of sales has 30 connections not 3000 but 30 you know uh um uh, really um uh, and so that's not you know it's like it's a, it's like an offshoot so i just 
I kind of just, I can't help myself. I just, if I see some other thing that they should be doing or not doing, I point it out to them as part of, part of my process where I think a lot of other uh, consultants said, this is not a, you know, it's, it's just a different process. They're very focused. You know, Hugh, this is my assignment. I'm putting on these blinders. I'm only going to do this. And they do a great job of that, right? Uh, I just see there are things that you hadn't even thought to ask about because you didn't know they were wrong. And uh, I like to be identifying those as well as the other thing I like to do is I make I want to find out what's the hidden asset that every company has assets and liabilities. And so you could have an asset such as we answer the phone. OK, that, that your customers really appreciate. But you go, well, doesn't everybody? No, apparently not. <laughs> so you need to make a bigger deal. of it. You're, you're doing something you're getting no credit for. OK, you know, and uh, and, you know, identify things like that, because I'm a I'm also a big fan of in today's world with the Internet. Uh, there are so many things that you can do, I'll say, for free. OK, and, and, and not totally for free, but, you know, like. If you write a blog post about about your product or your, a problem of your customer or something like that, or you pay somebody to write it for you and you put it on your blog and Google likes it. OK, you don't write a check to Google to show up, you know, in organic search. Right. It, it, and it, it could just sits there for until somebody writes a better thing or nobody has that question anymore. It just sits there and and then putting stuff on social media doesn't cost you any money. It, it, yeah, it takes a little bit of your time. Okay, you could do that. But it's not like, oh, my gosh, we're going to the builder show, and we have a 20 by 20 booth. And so we have the cost of the booth space, the cost of the booth, taking all the field the, uh, out of the field, flying them in all the T and E and all that stuff that's going to go with it. Like, whoa, yeah, we're very comfortable writing checks for all that stuff. But there are all these things that you can do today that literally, you know, I view that don't cost re relatively don't cost any money. And, and so I'm, I'm, you know, always looking at, are you are you doing everything you can in this area? And then we can layer on top of it spending. Also, the other thing I find, Sean, is that the larger the company is, the more risk averse they are. So yeah. the more they're playing defense, okay? They are, they look and say, I have more to lose than to gain, okay? Yeah. And so I work best with companies that have more to gain <laughs> than lose or, you know, and, and really want to make a difference. Right. And, uh, and the bigger the company, the more, you, you know, you, you run into, okay, we're, we're you know, we're, we're, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Wow, everywhere. Like I, I had a, uh, um, I had a young man two weeks ago. I never met this person before. On LinkedIn, uh, he, I, he's not on my newsletter subscription list. That we're not connected on LinkedIn. I, I, I just on LinkedIn, I get a message from this young man from Indiana, who was in Denver at some sort of concrete uh, show at a distributor or something. And he, he just reached out and said, Mark, you know, I've read your book and uh, you've really, you know, your writing's been very helpful to me. I just thought I just on a chance, could I, you know, could I, uh, would you have time for coffee or a meal or something, right? And, uh, and so he came over, he drove 45 minutes to Boulder from Denver and we went to dinner together, you know, and, uh, and like everybody I talk to, I learn as much from them as I hope they're learning from me. So I, you know, I, I had a, a, an independent rep yesterday morning call me. Uh, you know, he, he can't afford to hire me. He just he just out of the blue said, Mark, do you have a few minutes? I got a couple of questions. Sure. And we got on the phone and and uh, I helped him out. Uh, but at the same time, I was like, okay, wow, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, so I'm constantly learning, and I would say that, you know, the, 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 you know, I learn one by just being observant of what's going on in the world, you know, like I, like this idea of the uh, inflation and recession doesn't really concern me, um, 
because like I look back at COVID and COVID affected a group of either less fortunate, lower income people, or people, maybe younger people just out of college that, you know, working at Starbucks or something, you know, um, that's who it really affected. You know, if you, if you had a job, you know, you, you actually were doing pretty good, you know, and, and did better. And so you, you had money that you couldn't spend on travel and vacation. So you spend it on a new deck or a new kitchen or whatever, or a new house. Well, that, that same group of people that are doing quite well are still there <laughs> and they're still, you know, they're, they're not slowing down. Um, and, and they, they don't really care that gas is $5. They can bitch because the newspaper tells them, but they don't even notice they fill up the gas and they, and they drive away. They don't look and go, Oh my God, Martha, you know? So, uh, so, so I'm watching what's going on in the world. And then also every chance I get to talk to somebody in the industry, whether it's an architect, a builder, uh, a, a, a person that's a, that, that's a, that's a president of a company or a salesperson or a technical person. I don't, you know, the, the, the shipping clerk for a lumber dealer, I don't care. <laughs> every, every one of them has something, you know, some knowledge that I can learn from by just asking them, you know, learning about how they see the world and what's going on in their business.